a little recap of October 7th and the one-year recognition of the atrocity that took place on October 7th, 2023, when Hamas terrorists waged the deadliest attack on Jews since the Holocaust, slaughtering babies and committing sexual violence, unimaginable violence, burning whole families alive and taking 240 civilians hostage and uh, they murdered over 1,200 Israelis during this attack. And one year later, Hamas is still holding over 100 men, women, and children. And so we need to recognize that, that, that this is still ongoing. There has not been a day that Israel has not suffered attack and missile attacks um, since that day. And Israel continues to fight for its survival, battling really a seven-front war at this point against uh, the Iranian regime and Hezbollah and the Houthis and Hamas and others. Israel is literally surrounded by her enemies and is fighting a war on all sides. And Hamas, by the way, in Hebrew means violence. I don't know if you know that or not. And as mentioned, in the Bible, several places, Psalm 140, verse 1, Ezekiel 7, 11, Ezekiel 7, 23, Psalm 74, 20, the word Hamas is used in the Bible. And it is not just coincidental that there is a group that is seeking to destroy Israel and the nation of Israel and the people of God, the Jewish people, and their name is Hamas, which in the Bible means, means violence. But I, I want to give you an update because even more shocking events continue to take place as anti-Semitism rises and continues to rise in our world. This is truly an astonishing phenomenon given the atrocities that have been committed against the Jewish people. But just this year in September, at the annual meeting of the United Nations in which uh, representatives, lead and head representatives, in some cases presidents such as our president, meet in, in, at the UN in New York City just this year following the October 7th attack. And, and again, rockets, there's not a day that rockets have not been fired into Israel since that day. The UN met for its annual meeting, 194 nations meet at the UN for its annual meeting. And this past September, the very first resolution offered in the United Nations at their annual meeting was introduced by the Palestinians. And that resolution was that the Jews need to leave Judea, Judea, Samaria, Eastern Jerusalem, including the Western Wall, and Gaza within 12 months. The resolution was that the Jewish people need to leave literally their own nation within the, within the next 12 months, and that the nations, the rest of the nations of the world should stop supplying them with weapons to defend themselves. In other words, it was a resolution to totally destroy the people of Israel, to totally, totally destroy the Jewish people. Now here's the shock. It passed overwhelmingly, with only 14 nations voting no, out of 194. 180 nations of the world voted for the Jewish people to leave their own nation within 12 months and voted for the rest of the world to uh, uh, withhold weapons by which they could protect themselves. Now, the United States did vote no, as did 13 other nations. Most of the other nations were tiny little nations, not, not uh, you know, to be honest with you, not influential nations of the world. And even though the United States voted no, it was really a no that was more of, of uh, a weak no in that, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations wouldn't be able to be open if it wasn't for the money that the United States supplied. They would shut down in a week. So if the United States was really serious about what was going on and was really opposed to this, they would shut the money off to the United Nations, the United States would choke the money off to this, this ungodly organization that's seeking to be a world government and shut them down. But the United States voted no, but it was a weak no. As one individual has said, it was a wink, wink, nod, nod, no. So it's astonishing 
that the world has voted for the Jews to leave. This is an anti-Semitic, uh, this is a, a demonstration of the anti-Semitic hatred. Um, and this resolution is a direct fulfillment, by the way, of the, of the scripture Joel, found in Joel 3, the first and second verse. It says that God will gather the people of the nations of the world for judgment, and he will put them on trial for what they did to the people of Israel. And here's the wording, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. So this resolution is a direct confrontation of Joel, uh, the third chapter, and fits into the judgmental category uh, that God says he will judge nations for. So we're living in it, it's, it's all coming down. And then on Sunday, they adopted another resolution, and this one, this one you didn't hear about because there was really no, there was really no vote on this. It was an adoption of, of, of a policy, the path for the future, the UN adopted, that strengthened the power of the Secretary General of the UN, giving him the power to declare, quote unquote, a complex global shock. This means if there's a worldwide crisis, any type of worldwide crisis, another COVID, or any type of conflict, including conflicts, if the secretary of the general secretary of the United Nations deems any event to be a global, complex global shock, he could make himself a global dictator, restricting, for example, the right to travel, restricting financial transactions between nations. This is literally setting that secretary of the United Nations up as a global leader and it's a global governance plan. It has already been put in place just a, just a month and a half ago. So ladies and gentlemen, it seems to me that fits into something the Bible talks about called the Antichrist. And a one world leader, a one world dictator. We're seeing that take place right before us. I want to bring these things before you because I believe it's so important that you stay in touch and that you recognize what is happening at an alarming pace uh, before us. All right, are, are you ready for some good news in the face of these resolutions and, and what's going on? I want to give you some good news. When that resolution was adopted in the United Nations, it, 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 it triggered something, and Israel decided, by the way, after that resolution was adopted, more rockets began to be fired by Hezbollah, Hezbollah and it emboldened them, and Israel then decided it was enough. And so what happened was, we began to see a series of unfolding events. Israel, by the way, it is believed from reports of individuals, intercepted pagers that were on their way to Hezbollah from Taiwan because they believed, the terrorists believed, that it was harder to trace pacers, a, a pager than it was a cell phone. And so the terrorists, the mid-level terrorists, were operating by pagers on which um, messages could be sent. Israel intercepted those pagers, and they put within them an explosive device and a trigger method. And Israel, those pagers, by the way, it is believed that that was intended to be used during war, never intended to be used at this time, but it was evidently leaked, and so Israel had no option and Israel then triggered those pagers, as you saw, thousands of them, and they exploded, and, and resulting in the mid-level terrorists being blown up. No one knew who these terrorists were until their pagers blew up. And then all of a sudden it became very apparent, and it became very apparent to Hezbollah and Hamas and the Houthis that the IDF knew exactly who they were. And the IDF, Israel Defense, knows exactly who the terrorists are. So Israel started with fighting back and the explosion of these pager, pagers. And then, after that happened, they began to fire, and by the way, Hezbollah has had over 200,000 rockets hidden just over the border and been holding these over Israel's head for 25 years. Those rockets are hidden in specially designed homes. Those homes where these rockets are hidden, they're using human beings as shields, but those homes were not only storage homes, but these locations and homes also had the ability to launch those rockets from that home. So there were 200,000 of these rockets 
were aimed at Israel for 25 years. Now what they decided to do is they began firing back at Hezbollah to take out their cruise missiles in these hiding places where these homes were hiding them. In five to six days, after 1,600 strikes, Israel destroyed in only five days, after 25 years of these being held over their head, in five days Israel said that's enough, and they launched over 1,600 precision, precision attacks, and they destroyed 100,000 of these rockets in five to six days. They did more than that. Right when, right when Netanyahu was giving his speech to the United Nations, they had been tracking Hassan, Hassan Nasrallah, and he is the head, by the way, of the largest terrorist group on earth. Taking him out is bigger than taking out bin Laden. The, 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 bin Laden pales in comparison to Nasrallah. And here's what happened. They, they knew where he was at. They knew that he wanted to see Netanyahu give his speech. So they knew where he would be at. And during the time of Netanyahu's speech, he would be watching TV at a certain location. And when Netanyahu was speaking, the command was given to take him out. And they dropped bunker, bu uh, uh, bunker buster after bunker buster to go down and penetrate 2,000 pound bombs. And they took out they took out Nasrallah, they took out his replacement, they took out his replacement's replacement, they took out their replacements, they destroyed the terrorists, the high-level commanding terrorist regime at all the way down to the mid-level in one fell swoop. I tell you... You say, well, this is an amazing... I'm going to tell you, this points to God Almighty protecting a nation against her enemy. So this really ticked them off, of course. So they decided they were going to fire the big boys. The big boys, these are not small missiles. These are huge missiles, many, many feet long. And for the first time in the history of the world, over 200 of these missiles were launched. Precision missiles launched. First time in the history of the world against one nation. 200 of these missiles were launched into Israel, Israel the size of New Jersey, and out of 200 of those missiles, not one Israeli was killed, not one individual was wounded. The Iron Dome, David's sling, they are not guaranteed to take out missiles like that. The manufacturer will not guarantee them to, to stop this. But out of 200 missiles, not one of those missiles killed a single individual, and the others that got through landed harmlessly in open areas of Israel, of which there is very few open areas in Israel, and in the water. This was so amazing that even Jews who do not believe in God, there are many secular Jewish people who do not believe in God. Many of the people who live in Tel Aviv are, are very secular. But when the Jewish people saw that these missiles, 200 missiles in this huge attack, didn't kill one person, they, begin, they are all saying now, they're beginning to say, this is biblical, this is scriptural, there is a God. And 150,000 Jewish people showed up at the Western Wall to pray. God is on the move. It is our prayer that they will not only recognize God is alive and that God is real, but they will come to know Jesus Christ as their Messiah and recognize that through him, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So, I... You know, now, there, there are a lot of pastors that won't touch things like this, but I want you to know that we need to stand with Israel. And you need to stand with Israel. And Israel's enemies are our enemies.